Wow, finally, a real go-home wrestling show. That's amazing, huh? Why is that green light? Oh, hello, folks. For I'm the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom, and I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling. It was a kind of mixed show. Um, I know it's kind of a cold start for me. Um, normally, I have some thank yous to give out. I don't, I don't think I was talking a lot. I was kind of having my pizza, my red wine, and... I'm having my rehydration beverage, which is the most important part of Red Wine Friday, so that way you don't wake up dealing with that, like, dehydrated hangover. So, yes, and again, if you are going to have a, a glass or a bottle or three of red wine, stay home. Don't drink and drive. My public service announcement, the one, the only... Hobo Tom. I'm not here to tell you how to live your life, though. Um, I'd like to thank Wawa and 7-Eleven. They have eased up on their mask restrictions. You can finally go out in public with this beautiful mug. No, I'm here to talk about some SmackDown wrestling. Um, it was actually... I thought it was actually pretty good. The wrestling was good. There was a lot of it. Um, the end seemed stretched out. I understand why, though. Um, parts of it, I'll tell you what. Bravo. Bravo to Wrestling Court. Um, I took one of my friends, Dan, is actually a lawyer. Let's see here. I'm going to probably show super pirated. So, well, I'll also show it later. I just want to get somewhat queued up. Oh, but also, the only bad thing about the show, I managed to get my Christmas bar set up. Or holiday bar for me, it's my Christmas bar. So I'm all set for that. Um, but no, let's talk about some SmackDown wrestling. Good show. Starts off uh, Kevin Owens show. He has Daniel Bryan. Pretty good guest. I think they're going to tease a, a Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan. Probably for Wrestle, probably feud out till WrestleMania. Again, well, we don't fuzz on that desk. That's what happens when I clean off this freaking table. Jeez, like a kitten fluff. Kitten fluff. Oh, I got distracted for a second. I do have to clean this house up. Come November 11th, when I have a freaking day off. It's gonna feel so good. But no, more about SmackDown Wrestling. Um, first off, I think they're gonna tease a, a Kevin, Kevin Steen, Brian Danielson. Oh, I mean Kevin Owens, Daniel Bryan match. Because that's what it's leading to. Um, Kevin Owens is talking to Daniel Bryan. He was a guest on the KO show. We'll talk about being a tag team. Of course, when, once you mention tag teams, on SmackDown, Dolph Ziggler comes out. Yeah. Robert Roode's pretty good. He just He's he's a quite straight man. I can deal with that. This, le this leads us to an eight-man tag match. Um, it is Kevin Owens and Daniel Bryan, along with the Street Profits. Taking on Shinsuke Nakamura, Cesaro, Dolph Ziggler, and glorious Robert Roode. Still, when he was NXT, the glorious was so over. For some reason, it died off in w and, and once it got to the big show. I have no clue why. Oh, also... Oh well, I'll talk. I'll talk about that at the end. Um, so eight man tag. Uh, this year, for the most part, Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro is so so good. I have no idea why they. I, I wait. Well, I correct myself. I understand why they utilize them the way they can because they can. Shinsuke Nakamura is so happy just to be in Florida surfing. Um, compared to New Japan. The bumps he has to take in WWE are so much reduced. I mean, he's probably extended his career a couple years by coming over to the States. Cesaro is just Cesaro. He's great anyway. Except for he does not like beach balls, though. Beware, Cesaro. If I'm there, there will be beach ball mania. Whole other issue, though. Um... So with that, Shinsuke Nakamura says, are they double team Dan um, Dawkins for a while? He gets in. Um, this match actually had a really fa 
It was really well paced. It seemed fast. There was constant action, even in the latter stage of the match. It wasn't as fast, but there was always some move. It was well paced. It wasn't a slog. It wasn't rest hold mania. It was really good. Um, the heels, all four of them, they said, you know what? We're going to beat up someone. Uh, Rudes and Cesaro with the aim and the aim and double teams. Daniel, Daniel Bryan eventually has a bad knee from doing his backflip off the top rope. Again, that will tweak a knee if you do it often enough. Knees are not meant to take that kind of stress. Uh, Cesaro works over the knees, so does Robert Rude and Dolph Ziggler. It's really good to see the heels kind of ganging up. That's good stuff. Uh, Cesaro, again. Dude, he's a beast. Why isn't Cesaro... I can understand why he's not the Universal or WWE Champion. He should have been a U.S. I forget if he was a U.S. Champ. Oh, I think about it. I mean, U.S. Champ or Intercontinental, Intercontinental Champion for a long time with a really good title reign would have been perfect for Cesaro. Never figured out why why they did not do that. Because, I, I mean, he's carrying the match. Him and Dan and Brian are the best. Uh, Rude gets back in the ring. Again, very calculating, heelish. Isolating the knee of Daniel O'Brien and taking the cheap shot on Dawkins so he can beat more behind the referee's back on Daniel O'Brien while he's in the ropes. Again, smart cerebral heel who takes advantage of the rules. That's what people liked about Robert Rude in NXT. But now in WWE, he's just glorious. <sighs> <clears throat> Too much cheese. I'll tell you what, that pizza was amazing, though. Marcos is good stuff. Um, again, he drives the knee of Daniel O'Brien, the cheap shot. Uh, Dawkins, he gets a hot tag. He just cleans house, as it should be. Shinsuke Nakamura, he did that kick. And that one knee backstabber, that was good. I, I, I don't mind the way they're using them. It's just they keep on losing matches on TV. Pay-per-views tends to be a little bit different. But they're that team people should freaking fear. Mainly because they want to put other teams over. Um, then, of course, Spot Fest. Ding, ding, ding. Ring the bell. Spot Fest. Everyone has to come out. Um, Kevin Owens eventually got in the ring. He delivered his stunners to everyone. Um, and this, uh, I'll tell you what. I will always give credit where credit is due. Montez Ford, oh my god. The height he gets on that frog splash is absolutely amazing, and I can't believe it. Let's see, what does Matt say? I'm sure. Dude, it sits there. No, my stuff sits there. Again, this, that's the bar picture I showed you. My friend's responding, so it's like, dude, Christmas bar set up. <laughs> There's no point. No, it's, it's a collection. It's a collection for a few times a year. I'm still so upset I couldn't have a triple mania party. It drives me absolutely bonkers. No, this is WWE. I shouldn't even be mentioning AAA. Um, so, yeah, Spot Fest, Kevin Owens hits stunners. Um, again, Montez Ford, amazing. Um, Angelo Dawkins, great looking flap pancake, flapjack, whatever he calls it. Montez Ford, amazing frog splash. Faces win. I'll tell you what, I enjoyed this match. For being a multi multi man match, this was actually a surf and surf match. Now they have Thunderdome Court, which is, oh, this was just ridiculous. Um, the Court of Thunderdome, it was Wrestling Court. You have the new Wrestle Court, JBL's the judge, Rod Simmons is the bailiff. On one side, 
of course, the plaintiff, you have the Ms. and Morrison. And actually, like, what looks like a real female lawyer. They might have told someone from the staff. They might have told someone, from, like the executive staff, hey, we need you. On the defendant's side, we have Otis. Yeah. Hopefully the cat. Oh, and she, no, my cat's good about that. My, my cat. Is good. I trained her as not to go around somewhere. My dad, on the other hand. On the other, not either. Dot, dot, dot. Um, yeah, so this this was actually fun. Um, it starts launching off like schmuck versus U.S. It was just total nonsense. Fires the lawyer. Uh, we go to break, then we have Daniel Bryan. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Fist bumps, the street profits. Kevin Owens is staring at him. That was great. Um, Otis. Only thing Otis says is like, "Hey, I won this." The judge is like, it "Sounds about right." Then we had uh, yeah, the D Daniel Bryan fist bump. That was great. Uh, Bianca Belair comes out versus Lena Vega. This is the match it should have been. Um, it was for the most part a squash. Bianca Belair. Picks up Vegas and Vegas and, and Selena Vegas goes down. Jeez, Selena Vegas is freaking short. Bianca Belair is relatively tall for a woman, but Bianca Belair is a f short. Um, she's short. She has to be short. She has to be shorter than Nikki Cross. I don't care what they say, even in her freaking like five inch heels. But yeah, uh, Bianca Belair picks up Vegas. Vegas goes down. And that was so funny. She was showing off the tights that say smacks on and starts slapping her ass. That was just funny. Bianca literally, like, I think Zelina Vega and like a hurricanrana, like a kick and a hurricanrana. That was it. Bianca Belair did what she should have done. She literally deadlift, deadlift, press lift over her head and tossed uh, Zelina Vega onto the turnbuckle, hit her with a KOD, and that was it. No. Mine is a little. Mine is getting older. And then as a kitten, there was the broom, the dreaded room under the glassware under the stemware and behind the toilet never did I hit her though But she did not like. Oh, a new message. Who sent me another message? Uh huh. Yep. Yeah. All kinds of bad now in schools. Yep. Uh, so again, this was total squash match. I do apologize slightly for my, going on my cell phone. I'm finding not working, so I don't have to worry about that. Although, yeah, this is not work. YouTube's not paying me. If I was monetized, that's a whole different issue. But yeah, this is what it should be. It was a squash match. Meh. It's a ham sandwich.
I was getting worried because they had four matches in the first hour. Like, what are they going to do? So we had Shory G taking on Lars Sullivan. Uh, Shory G, he pulled that, um, oh, I forget his name now. But when Braun Strowman had, had squash matches, they interviewed people. And that's what this felt like. So they're kind of redoing what um, No Chin Music did. Um, oh, shoot. I forget his name. You out there in the YouTube audience, let me know who that who that was. So I forgot about him. But yeah, whoever did that, uh, whoever was No Chin Music, feuded with AJ for a little bit. And like the, su the supposed boyfriend of Carmella. Yeah, because they did this with Shorty G. Uh, Lars Sullivan came out. Um, Shorty G went to the top rope, got caught into a fallaway slam after he tried to dive. Uh, then just like a pancake, uh, Shorty G, he, he went off the ice. Kind of smart idea. Uh, went for a rolling legger kick, which is really good. Shorty G, however, missed that. Or, or he missed uh, a big splash in the corner. Uh, Lars, like, tossed him across the ring. Freak accident. Over. Shorty G's done and over with. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chad Gable. Um, that was terrible. Uh, Lars Sullivan obviously won in a squash match. Ham sandwich of a match. <laughs> How do you feel? Yeah, then they asked, then um, Charlie asked Shorty G, How do you feel now? It's like, stupid question. How do you think I feel? Yeah, I'm done. I, qu I quit. A Seth promo. There's no more Shorty G. Thank you. Um, Bailey and Sasha did a promo. Um, yeah, Sasha makes Bailey sign the contract. Russell Court Part Two. And now it's time to show a little bit of Russell Court. I'm going to do this a cheap, a hobo way because I don't think I'll actually get copyright violations. So that's the good sign. Let's see here. Um, I literally think it's like seconds too. The bar scene, bar scene. Let's see. Here. Oh yeah, here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So again, this is Russell Court. Let's see here. Second part. Damn. That's all you have to say about that. So, yep. So, and of course, this I think it's going to lead to a Hell in a Cell match. Otis versus Miz for the Money in the Bank contract. I'll say early odds. I'll put that. Let's see here. I'll put that on the list. And even though Dr. Tom already made his predictions, Dr. Tom's not here. And he sells me a bottle of scotch. But let's see here. I shall say um, Otis. V Miz. I'll just circle Miz as a winner. I'll put him in his prediction list. So now it's official. Um, oh wow, this video is almost over too. And then we have Seth Rollins versus Murphy. Uh, Murphy, very technical match to start off. Again, you have the Messiah versus the Disciple. Uh, Seth kept on letting us know the Disciple follows the the um, Messiah leads. Follow me. A very technical match, Seth. The problem with technical matches, Seth goes into headlock mania mode. Where it's headlock and rest hold for really overly long periods of time. Um, there was a big shoulder tackle. Murph hit the right hand onto Seth. That was great. Um, then he did the Huracrana. And then uh, Seth goes out of the ring trying to catch his breath. Murphy baseball slides there, hits a backdrop on Seth. Seth goes on said table. The table no-sells for 
I am the table, I am the table, I am the table, cuckoo cachoo. And that album, if you have the original one, it's really expensive now. Um, Murph hits a top rope meteor when you come back. And again, Murph is a little back and forth. Um, he kind of, Murph did the right thing. If he did, if he didn't separate his shoulder, he tried to, to pop it in the right way. Like you've seen wrestlers do the pass right and bang it in, bang it in. No, that's only going to make it worse. What you need to do, you need to hold like a heavy weight, tense your arm, and then just let it fall, and it will naturally fall back into place. So when Murphy was holding against something, and he tried to kind of yank it back into place, that's a little bit more realistic. It's still pretty painful, though. Um, then, yes. Yeah, so again, Seth started to work over the shoulder. Then, actually, I was setting up said Christmas bar. Let me show you a picture of before and after of Christmas bar. So you can see what it looked like. Let's see here. So this is before setup. Let's see, give this a couple of seconds because I think I, I, my camera every so often starts to song cut like after 20 minutes. So let's see here. Yep, there's before. And see how nice and pretty looks afterwards? So that's just like a whole mess of stuff. Now it looks nice and somewhat organized. So yeah, um, I was setting up the ooh, did I yeah, there we go. That's a new that's a good setup of the Christmas bar. Um, I think I only need two more balls and you still gonna cover it in some foo foo brandy drink. Just just to make it look nice. Um, Murphy wins so Aaliyah, Mysterio comes out, Dominic and Ray come out, they kind of look a little bit differently at, at Murphy, nearly accepting him. So that was pretty good. That was a good match. Oh, it was a Seth Rollins match. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we had Paul Heyman and Roman Reigns. Uh, recap time. Roman Reigns comes out to the ring. Uh, Jimmy's actually in front of a very elegant looking bread, cheese, and fruit tray because Jay's behind him. Jay jumps him. Um, they start talking to each other. Uh, if uh, for the most part, Roman wins. Jimmy and Jay Uso, they're going to be banished from the tribe. And Roman Reigns will take Naomi as his concubine, I guess. Um, and then, of course, the cell comes down. Then you have a picture of Jay Uso climbing on the cell with Roman Reigns on the inside. That's a good way to end the show. And that was SmackDown. And, uh, and, and, an interesting SmackDown. Definitely was, had its hot. It was entertaining. This. Felt like a go home show more so than even the Impact Wrestling show, which we'll get to in a moment. Oh shit, I still have to do that. <laughs> and um, the Raw Raw just felt weird. I liked so one update. Um, I am not going to the concert. My friend said, you know what? For like, uh, she's still a little bit under the weather. She might go there for two hours. For me to take an hour and a half trip up there, hour and a half trip back. To like literally like pick her up and back. Uh, she's like, no, don't bother showing up. I, I told her I'll make it up to you. Uh, Veterans Day I have off. I might I might go up there for a day. Um, other times, like if she ever called, she knows I'm there after work or well within reason. Um, if she had said, Tom, I need you here. It's three in the morning. I said, I could be there by five. But listen, I really do have to leave like at six though. So. I can fix whatever in an hour. Just let me figure out stuff. So yeah, um, again, a few other people. If Matt ever called, I I would I would say you know what, give me like twelve hours. I'll give me well probably eighteen hours. I'll be there. Dan called. I say you know what, give me a day. I'll figure out something. Um, a few other people are on that short list. So yeah, eventually I do have to do a show with Twisted Pixie. I have to mention that somewhere. Um, so I will be doing the. Bound for Glory show. In fact, I have to make that card tonight after I hobo. Because I only need four more pieces of aluminum, aluminum to make my quota. And I'll be darned if four pieces are going to hold me short of stuff. 
So I would like to thank everyone for watching. So please like, share, comment, subscribe. And you guys will get to see me Thursday. And I think my treat for myself, I think I'm only going to make two because Sunday I'm having Burger Royales on bagels. Uh, tomorrow's dinner, it's going to be cheese stuffed bacon cheeseburgers. Good stuff. I shall, so you'll see me tomorrow sometime. Bye.